Five Nights at Freddy's is directed by Emma Tammy and stars Josh Hutcherson and is the highly anticipated adaptation of the very popular video game series of the same name. And here, a troubled security guard, played by Hutcherson, begins working at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. During his first night on the job, he realizes that the night shift won't be so easy to get through. Pretty soon, he will unveil what actually happened at Freddy's. But before we get into the rest of the video, I do want to give a very special thank you to our sponsor, Paradox. I've recently been checking out Star Trek Infinite. With Star Trek Infinite, there is no singular way to play, whether you wish to take the route of diplomacy, espionage, warfare, or a mix of all of them, there are multiple paths to victory. You're in command, and the fate of the Quadrant is in your hands. You'll take on the role of leader in charge of all the major decisions of your faction as the game unfolds, and with each faction having their own unique style of play, your decisions determine determine how successful you are in reaching your goals. Star Trek Infinite is also filled with so many different iconic characters from the Star Trek universe that we know and love. You can play as captains and officers, including Picard, Janeway, Sisko, and Data, to name just a few. Sometimes the options in the game can actually be really overwhelming, in a good way. There really are so many different ways you can play the game, and it doesn't feel like it's pushing you towards any one thing. I haven't had a chance to talk about a lot of the films or TV shows on my channel, but I am a big Star Trek fan, and maybe in the future I will. So I've had a lot of fun going through this game and seeing a lot of familiar faces and starships and having a really good time with it. So download Star Trek Infinite. It's a really fun mobile game. There's a link for it in my description below. Thank you so much to Paradox for sponsoring this video. So full disclosure up front, I've never played a single Five Nights at Freddy's game, so this review is going to be for the people out there who haven't. As far as the lore and the fandom, I did see it with a friend of mine who loves the games, and so because of my friend, I was able to learn a lot of things after the movie that the movie tributed, paid homage to, and some things the movie changed. And according to my friend, there are things in the movie that some fans might scratch their heads over. But for me, I was looking at it purely as a film. Am, am I able to be initiated into this without knowing anything, without ever playing any of those games, and can I enjoy it as a movie? And I certainly did. I was very impressed, especially with Emma Tammy as a filmmaker, because I've seen her movie The Wind, which is a very indie horror film, and I mean that in the most kind way, but this is absolutely not an indie horror film. It's a very mainstream commercial movie. There's a lot of money behind this film. And she's gone from directing a horror film in the indie space to making a commercial movie, and it really does feel like she's done it multiple times. All of the production design inside Freddy's felt warm and nostalgic to me. It reminded me of Chuck E. Cheese. But even as a kid, there was something slightly off-putting about Chuck E. Cheese, the mouse itself. There's a guy in there, and the face never moves. And that creep factor is utilized very well here. What I also really liked about the movie is Josh Hutcherson. I loved seeing him in a movie again, and I was extremely impressed with what felt like a real dedication to making this security guard feel like a person. He's taking care of his young sister. He also has a lot of leftover trauma that comes from the disappearance of his young brother. And he believes in what I think is actually one of the more fascinating elements of the movie that might not work for everyone, that if he can get inside his own dreams and train himself to remember things that are buried deep within his mind, that he could remember the person who took his brother. I really didn't expect any of this. I figured we'd spend most of the movie inside Freddy's battling animatronic monsters, and that certainly happens in the film, and there's an aspect of the movie that builds upon the creep factor of animatronics coming to life, and what they might do if they decided to kill people. But along with those very well-directed horror sequences, the film does have a real heart to it, and that's actually where the movie spends its most time. Because not only are all of those things happening to him, but there's a custody battle potentially going on, where he wants to make sure he can continue to take care of his sister, while his aunt, who's not exactly the nicest person alive, would prefer to have custody. So the movie does a very good job fleshing out its lead character, maybe even more than it should. Uh, I felt like I had enough, but they kept piling on interesting things for this guy to do. I really can't begin to describe just how much weight I give to a film that's directed and edited well. There's elements of the movie that don't necessarily work for me. There's a few reveals that felt a little hammy. There's one character that has some very sinister plans, and some things go wrong with those plans, and it feels like it's forgotten about and rarely ever mentioned again. On the PG-13 rating, some people are upset about this, which I, of course, understand. Again, didn't play the games, so I don't feel like I am being betrayed here in some way. But there was actually a surprising amount of gore for a PG-13. There's some sound effects and some close-up shots,
shots of dead bodies that I thought actually pushed the boundaries of the PG-13 rating. But there were some times where it felt like they were trying to edit some of the potential language that could be in the movie. One character sees something that startles him and he screams, oh my goodness. And this movie does a thing for me that's a little bit of a pet peeve, and a lot of films do this, and it's sort of like a failure to communicate the proper reaction to an everyday person seeing something that challenges everything they've ever known about their life and planet Earth. And their reaction is a little bit too muted. And I just need these characters to have like a nervous breakdown for a second <laughs> to accept that like things are happening on another plane in this movie that they've never experienced before instead of being like, oh, that's weird. Huh. Well, I'm going to go clock out. So I'll be back tomorrow. You guys have a nice night uh, walking around. So I don't really know if fans of the games will be pleased with this. For all I know, it could be hated. I just know that it worked for me as a film outside of the lore and outside of the fandom because I'm not part of it. And I think that younger kids especially will probably enjoy it because they can actually go see it. It remains to be seen if adults feel that way, if they would have rather seen a rated R movie. But I think for me, Emma Tammy's great direction, Josh Hutcherson's wonderful performance, as well as a surprising amount of depth to our lead character. All those things made this movie really fun for me to watch, and I do think that if you aren't that invested in the lore, or maybe you will actually really enjoy it if you're a fan, I think that in general it's a really fun time at the movies. Guys, thank you so much as always for continuing to watch the 11th annual Halloween special. I have a few more videos coming for you for the rest of the month. In fact, you're going to get one every single day for the rest of the month because I went too far and I filmed too many videos. I was having too much fun. And uh, I don't know, I really love doing the special every year, guys. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you check out the videos. There's going to be a link for a playlist in a minute here that maybe you haven't seen yet. Thank you as always. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuck -manized.